Kavyakantha leapt out of the hollow of the tree. It was one o'clock in the afternoon, and the sun was beating down hard. The Karthikai festival was on, and hundreds of people thronged around the hill. Undeterred, he ran up the hill to Virapaksha cave and found Bhagavan sitting alone outside. Bhagavan directed his glance of grace at Kavyakantha, and like many devotees before him, he was transfixed and could not take his eyes off Bhagavan. Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni was an erudite scholar and an inspired poet, but had never prostrated himself before any human being. Suddenly, he found himself flat on the ground in front of the young ascetic. He held Bhagavan's feet tightly and cried, I have read all that has to be read. I have fully read Vedanta. I have performed japa to my heart's content. Yet, I have not understood what tapas, true austerity, is. Therefore, I have sought refuge at your feet. Pray and enlighten me as to the nature of tapas. The word tapas in Sanskrit literally means striving for the realization of truth through flaming penance and austerity. However, Bhagavan imparted its deeper meaning to Ganapati Muni. Helping him rise to his feet, Bhagavan looked into his eyes and after some time slowly replied, if one watches from where the notion I arises, the mind is absorbed into that. That is tapas. And since Kavyakanta had himself revealed that he practiced mantra japa, repeating mantras thousands of times every day, Bhagavan added, when repeating a mantra, if one watches the source from which the sound is produced, the mind is absorbed into that. That is tapas. These revelations thrill Kavyakantha. He finally understood how to be in touch with the truth through a practical method. Wave after wave of ecstasy flooded through him for hours in the presence of Bhagavan. At last, when he opened his eyes, he asked Bhagavan's attendant, Palani Swami, for the ascetic's name. Though he was then called Brahmana Swami, Kavyakantha learned that his real name was Venkataraman. So Kavyakantha took Ramana from his name, and since he had seen God in this ascetic, he named him Bhagavan. Bhagavan in Sanskrit means God or Lord. As he had also given a revelation about tapas, which no scripture had ever explained so clearly before, Bhagavan was also a Vedic Rishi. And a Rishi was the sages of yore. They are seers, one who has seen with the inner eye. A Rishi is he who is ever connected to the original, inexhaustible source of wisdom. But to Kavyakantha, Bhagavan was not only a Rishi, but a Maharishi, a great Rishi. Therefore, he named the ascetic Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi. This name, Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi, the chanting of which has guided countless people to the silent, still truth, was given by Ganapati Muni. At that time, he had over 200 disciples of his own, 
including noble scholars like Daivarata and Kapali Shastri. And so Ganapati wrote a letter to them saying, I have found my guru. Henceforth, it is not I, but Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi, who is our guru. The next day he went to Bhagavan and said, Bhagavan, please accept me. Bhagavan graciously conceded to his request and said, Stay in the cave that is adjacent to Virapaksha cave. It is called Mango Tree Cave. Its proximity to Virapaksha cave allowed the guru and disciple to visit each other every day. Bhagavan continued to pour his grace and helped Kavyakantha mature spiritually. Bhagavan held Kavyakantha in high esteem and dressed him with much respect. One day, Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni held Bhagavan's feet and begged, saying, Please, Bhagavan, do not address me respectfully. I am your disciple and your child. Do not address me in such reverential terms. But Bhagavan continued to do so. He then learned from his other disciples and Kavyakanti's admirers that they referred to him as Nayana, which means father in Telugu. Bhagavan told Kavyakanta, Hereafter, I will call you Nayana. Nayana accepted this because in Telugu, the word also meant disciple or child. It is interesting to note that Kavikantha was a staunch devotee of Shiva, the formless father aspect of God. He had never worshipped God in the aspect of the mother. However, from the moment the mother showed his guru to him, he became her devotee as well. In fact, the side of the hill in front of which the Aruna Chalaswara temple is located is called the front of the hill, and the stretch from the Niru Dulungam to the Eshanya Lingam, that is southwest to northwest or to northeast, is the back. A little-known secret about Arunachala is that the front is the father aspect, while the back is the mother aspect. All miracles and powers, psychic, spiritual, physical, or worldly, stem from the mother aspect. In the lives of Bhagavan's devotees, miracles and visions took place between the Naruda Lingam and the Ashaya Lingam. And with Ganapati Muni, too, it was the Naruda Lingam that the mother aspect guided him to his guru. So Ganapati Muni wanted to express his gratitude to the mother by composing a thousand Sanskrit verses in her praise. He surrendered to Bhagavan and began the work after getting his permission. He chose a sacred day to complete the thousand verses. Unfortunately, he fell ill and could write only around 700. The night before his self-imposed deadline, he approached Bhagavan at Virapaksha cave with his problem. Bhagavan encouragingly reassured him, do not worry, I will come and sit with you. It was a wonderful sight the young master sitting, radiating in silence. His older devotee, just a couple of years older, dictating extemporaneous verses in a torrential flow, and his disciples writing them down late into the night around the lantern light. Genius that he was, Kavyakantha started dictating the first line of the first verse to the first disciple the first line of the second verse to the second disciple, and the first line of the third verse to the third disciple, and so on. Then he proceeded without stopping 
to dictate the second line of the first verse to the first disciple, the second line of the second verse to the second disciple, and the second line of the third verse to the third disciple, until at 1.30 a.m. in the morning, the thousand verses were complete. Bhagavan, who until then was sitting with eyes closed in rock-like silence, opened his eyes and asked, Have you taken down all that I dictated? Kavyakantha fell at his guru's feet and cried, Yes, Bhagavan, they are your verses. This anthology of verses is called the Uma Sahasram. Uma is the Divine Mother, while Sahasram in Sanskrit means thousand. Therefore, the title can be translated as the thousand verses in praise of the Divine Mother. Kavyakanta Ganapati Muni revised the first 700 or so verses many times, but left the verses that he dictated that wonderful night, verses which he felt came from Bhagavan directly, untouched. <laughs> 